everyone, Mango7 Roll here. How are we doing today? Welcome to another episode of Epic 7, and I've got like 37 PMs right now, so I think the world is on fire. I'm not sure why, but there are some patch notes and we need to talk about them. Um, so let's just get into this. There's two flipping parts. Haven't read these yet as always, um, but I'm really excited to see what's going on. So this is after the fifth update, and the purpose of this hero adjustment is to improve the PvP ability of Covenant Summon heroes that have not been as popular. We improved certain artifacts, LOL, Noble Oath, LOL, um, what else is bad? Alexa's Basket. I haven't even read the patch notes, but as we go in here, if they buffed Alexa's Basket, I'm gonna laugh so hard because I was asked like a thousand times over the course of the last like six months or however long it's been out if you should uh like dust away your five star artifacts you don't use and i've always answered a resounding absolutely not it's just not worth it at all because you never know when all of a sudden your uh your rogues your what are they called in this game again your thieves are sitting there using a flip at alexa's basket so here's hoping um, anyways, let's get into this. This is uh, Lily Bet here. So, snip, snip, snip. I've got uh, E7 in the background just so I can double check abilities. Um, so before it does the same thing it did before, also increases caster's CR by 50% um, and 50% uh, increased damage. Like, that's pretty good, right? Uh, and also Cho Mao grants the caster skill nullifier. Okay, so they're giving her um Lilybeth, or not Lilybeth's uh Lydica's skill three uh boost after she uses it. And also an eleven percent damage increase. Is that enough? Uh I'm not sure, but it seems good because she protects herself after and that's important. Um Okay, okay, cool, cool. And as for Lid Ooh, Lydica, that's exciting. Dispels one buff. So if you want to make somebody like Lilica, Lilica really good, dispel first, then hit chance, because that's what she kind of needs to neutralize people. Um, because dispelling a buff after an AoE just kind of sucks, you know? Like, you miss all your debuffs and everything. Um, what else here? Making them unhealable. Wow, so they're like, you know, Wanderer Silk is too close to uh, Lilica. Uh, let's just take unhealable as well from her and add it to the pile. Uh, so that is good, but like, I I don't really know. Um, I I don't really know what to think about this. I feel like that's not a big enough change. Like this isn't really gonna do anything. The one dispel I don't think is gonna do too much. That said, right now on my uh, Guild War defense, I have like a seventeen thousand HP Lydica. Uh, that's used just for bruiserine and maybe this is gonna be a good not maybe this is a really good buff for her So maybe I can use her like that now instead of DPSE Okay, now we have Bassar. so Wow, they didn't highlight what's different here um, And I don't know his skills at all. So I'm just gonna read it attacks with magic 75% chance to transfer one debuff. Okay. Uh, when the caster is debuffed, has a 75% chance uh, to transfer before inflicting a random debuff. Okay, that's kind of cool. I like that. Uh, also, wait, is this is this 75% chance and then 100% chance of this or 75% of both? You have to hit this to hit this? I'm not sure. I imagine so, um, but I guess we'll see. Uh, this one decreases hit chance and attack. Okay, that's okay too, I guess. Um, and number three, decreasing combat readiness by 30%. Um, that's good, right? Because it, it dispels and then it, uh, combat decreases. So that, that seems pretty good, right? Uh, okay, I like that a lot, I think. I think I like that a lot if that were- Ooh, you fiend hype! <laughs> okay, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm like a, a little kid in a candy store that can't decide what to get, so he's just like grabbing a little bit of everything. Uh, so you fiend here. Spelling one buff with a 50% chance of silence, um, with an 80% chance of silence, so it goes up to 35%, and also 50% increased damage. She really needed damage on her skill too. 
it was like a support ability that did no damage. Um, so below it just stuns and dispels, and now it dispels all buffs and stuns. Okay, so that's really, really good too, because this makes it so she can actually hit um, all those things, right? Stunning for one turn and dispelling all buffs. Dispelling all buffs and stunning for one turn. I thought it stripped before... I thought it stripped before, but maybe I'm maybe I'm mistaken. Uh, what else? Okay, yeah, it, I I was definitely mistaken there because that's what they're saying this is made for right now. Um, it's been a long time since I've even seen you, Fiend. So, but, oh, Yuna, Soul Sphere is rubbing his hands together. I am too because I love Yuna. So, what does she do? Attacks all enemies, increases the combat readiness by six percent per target. And increases the combat readiness of all allies except the caster by 2%. That's a lot. 2% is a lot, right? Especially when you combine Rosa Hagarna. Uh, so that's cool. Two focus and one cooldown left on her skill too. I do like that too, but that means she's going to spend a lot of turns buffing. Um, but I guess that's okay. Tax all enemies with an enormous and powerful cannon. When hit, it will always result in a critical hit. Okay, I love this. I absolutely love this. So... I'm going to not be building her at all for crits. I'll just have her at like 20% crit rate and just all the crit damage in the world. And that'll be so much fun. Um, and then you can build her like really fast, lots of attack, lots of crit damage. And then you'll just have your skill one not doing as much. But the cool thing is um, you won't be skill one as much because you have one less cooldown on this and you'll be able to cycle into a meteor cannon more. Uh, I really like that. That's really cool. That's a really unique change too. Um, something I wasn't expecting, but I do like it. It also helps here too, because if you're faster, you'll hold me in laser more too. Oh my God. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Bless me. Um, damage increases 14% compared to before. Come on. Tax enemies with a massive fire pillar with a 100% chance to burn and a 50% chance to stun. Ah. Oh. I I didn't just want like mini baby Armenta. I wanted like something different. Now she's like, we know, we know we heard you. We heard you. She's worse than ML Araminta. And I know um you're sad you don't have her. So here's 10% of her. Um, so this is kind of really unfortunate. Uh I was so excited to see her name, but 14% damage, and while this stun is really good, like it doesn't Fix the main problems Araminta has. And I've talked about this before. Main problems Araminta has is um, one, her skill three just falls flat now. And two, her skill two also falls flat. Uh, and especially with her AI on any sort of auto, her skill two is a detriment. Like you'd be better off without having her skill two in most situations. Um, so that's really unfortunate. I want to see what they say about her though. You can both attack and provide support. That's perfect for her as a commander. Um, she was underperforming in PvP environments. I mean, this is going to help, right? 50% 50 50 chance to stun is not going to help. That said, um, I might be able to use her as like a 220 speed, like 13,000 HP bruiser and not worry about damage at all. Just work 100% as a bruiser. Um, so that's something I'm absolutely going to try out. Uh... Therefore, by adding a stun effect to her skill Fire Pillar, it now acts as a powerful containment as her first attack while allowing a combo effect with her skill Catalyst? I'm confused. Does it combo? It doesn't say it combos. Catalyst skill damage has been increased so that it can be Used not only for containment, but also... Excuse me? Um, sorry, one second. One second here. Ignite. Catalyst. Fire Pillar. Catalyst. Comboing effect with their skill. I might, there's something missing, right? Like, Fire Pillar is her skill 3. She was underperforming in PvP environments since it was difficult. 
Therefore, by adding a stun effect to her skill fire pillar, it now acts as a powerful containment as her first attack. Well, I'll, oh, as her first attack. So it's her first attack of the turn. So not her first attack of her A1. First attack as in the first thing she does that time. Um, and allowing a combo effect with her skill catalyst, they're just saying um, it does combo with the unhealable after they're burned. So they're not saying it's just because um, ML Aramint, the combos with her skill one and skill two. I thought that's what they were saying here, but it's not what they were saying. So I was getting like extremely excited there because that's what, exactly what I wanted. I wanted that. Like that's so cool from um, ML Araminta. Anyways, that's okay, but uh, I don't know what I think about it. I'm absolutely going to uh, switch off her gear and put her into um, just a pure HP bruiser build with low attack and every not low attack, but like no crit damage, no uh, crit rate or anything like that. Okay, so A Kali here. A Kali was designed to use. Uh, let me read the abilities first. So ambushes the enemy, deals additional damage. Everything's on fire, by the way. I'm out of it. I'm not out of it. I'm just there's so much going on. Um, we're on part one, by the way. Grants the caster increased speed. Okay. Proportionate to the caster's speed. Um, ambushes the enemy and grants. So the speed part happens after, so that's not going to change any damage, right? Um, also, damage increases 12%. That's good. I don't think she needed that, but that's good. Damage and stealth create increase by 9%. Okay. So that's just like an increase in damage and also lowering cooldown of murder. Um, I do like that. I think that's obviously going to help, but uh, nothing nothing like game change there. Fergus is somebody I don't even know what he does. So I know he's got a bunch of AoE and some provokes, I think, or counterattack or something like that. Uh, with decreased readiness by 20%, he's also going to do proportionate to max health. So we need some more defense percent people in the house here because we've got so many health tanks that are good um, and do stuff. We need some defense people because that's the gear I have. Uh, so hits all enemy when counterattacking with a 15% chance. That's that's pretty good. The stun definitely helps out. Uh, attacks all enemy 50% stun here too. Wow. Um, wow. Increase effect chance by 100%. Okay. Okay. That's cool. So uh, this is so you have a 50% above 30 and 100% under 30. So it, it just adds the above 30 and also proportionate to max health too. Holy, there is so much stuff. Uh, we have Armin here as well. Releases a bright light with 100% chance each to decrease hit chance. Okay. Um, so that's up from 50%. Also, uh, decreased damage suffered by allies by 10% when the skill is under cooldown. That would make sense for a skill called Shield Wall. Not sure how this is going to do for her, but I do like it. 10% damage reduction is always helpful. We have Crozet here. Um, grants increased defense and a barrier to an ally for two turns. And this is really good. As a, ooh, Kitty Calursa. That's so exciting. I, I need to stop looking below. Look up. Uh, this is really cool because a lot of these units, I don't know what they do. And that's a good thing. That I don't know what they do. Like, I know what they do, but I don't know specifically, you know? Like, I know um, that Crozet does some provokes. I know he... I, I think he decreases attack, too. Uh, but I don't know, like, exactly how he does it. Like, what percents and everything. And the fact that they're hitting these units are something I'm really excited about. Because uh, I want to know more, you know? So... Can be activated every turn instead of every second turn. Okay. And his breakthrough adds a 75% chance to provoke on AoE. That's cool too. I'm not sure if that goes up to 100% after um, imprints and stuff. Not imprints, after um, uh, skill ups there. But let's talk about Kitty Clarissa. Uh, wiggles a turn, granting an extra turn. Freaking finally! How long has it been since darn Kitty Clarissa? All she needed was to have a flipping additional turn i am so excited for this every time i use her i just wanted another turn i just wanted one more just give me a turn um i'm so so excited because i think that's going to make her um really really viable now and i think she's going to be great that's so exciting so 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 exciting 
Uh, I'm definitely going to be gearing mine up again, and holy, I'm excited for that. That's so exciting. Yay, Kitty Clarissa. I even have some mullahs in her. Um, so Katie's here. Uh, and decreases the target skill cooldown. Okay, that's just a, a cool little buff. I think this is this will be really good for like newer players. Um, without I guess mod warranty now. Uh, but I like that a lot. Maybe that'll combo with something that we're not really aware of. I can't believe how far it goes down. Jesus. And we have Audley and Gunther. Oh my God. Um, so allies receive thirty percent less damage instead of twenty percent. So that's good. Uh, exhales powerful darkness, decreasing CR by 40%, unable to be buffed, and inflicts silence. Okay. I'm not sure how good this is going to be, but maybe somebody will break it. Uh, caster does not deal a critical hit, but attack increased by 75%. Increases critical hit resistance by 70%. That is awesome. I honestly think they should make them like immune to crits or something and just have them just like <laughs> blow everybody out of the water. That would be hilarious. Uh, and his skill 3, I think, attacks with an enemy stunning one turn and increasing defense. And 30% damage to increase. Okay, that's really, that's really, really, really funny. Uh, okay, so this was, this was insane. Really quick going over this one here. We have Lilibet getting a really huge damage increase and um, skill nullifier making her much more viable for PvP. Lydica, I feel like it's just going to help a little bit more for PvE bosses that heal. I don't think you're going to be, like, PvPing much here. And if we are, I feel like we're going to see how Lydica is built. Um, Basar, this seems really, really insane. Really excited for that. Um, Euphine has a pretty solid buff, and I need to see how much damage this does. And to see if this makes her worth it as a first turn, just blow somebody out of the water person. Um, Yuna is really, really solid of a change. I really, really, really like it. And I like that it gives her a different set of gear that nobody else really will use because you don't need any crit rate. Granted, you're going to be missing the crit rate from your skill 1, which feels terrible, but I, I think that's a good price to pay. Aramintha, RIP, really sad about that, but going to try her anyway. A Kali, just a solid attack upgrade, tons extra damage, and increased speed buff for herself, which is really solid. Fergus, not even sure what to say, but uh, looks like he bruises and stuns a little more. Armin just does a little more um, tankiness stuff. Frozit does a little more provoking. AoE provoke is pretty good. Uh, Kitty Clarissa gets an extra turn. Absolutely insane. I think I'm really excited for that. Um, we also have... Oh, I missed this. Oh, no, that's Akadis. I thought that was Kitty Clarissa, too. Akadis doesn't really get anything. That's okay, but doesn't really help. And Audley and Gunther, I'm just not sure about. Wow. So let's go to part two. And this is Artifacts. Violet Talisman, please be good. Please be good, Violet Talisman. I'm so ready. Uh, I have so many Violet Talismans. Okay, so Justice for All, 100% chance to grant a random buff for two turns. That makes this a lot better. One turn just sucked. Uh, I'm not sure how two turns is going to go, but one turn was horrible. Alexis Basket, yes! I hope they make it the best artifact ever. Uh, okay, Violet Talisman increases attack by 10%. And stacks up to three times. Ah. So that's that's interesting. I that was not an awe like this is gonna be bad. That's an awe. I was hoping they made it more specialized for raids and stuff. Um, since that would that's what I feel like you want to use Violet Talisman for. So I'm not sure like where this is gonna stand now. I don't know how 30% attack compares to other things. But um I really feel like they should have made Moonlight uh, Dreamblade like the PvP and just overall use option and then make Violet Talisman the one you want to take into raids. And raids don't matter right now. Um, they do matter, don't get me wrong, but uh, they're not as hard as uh, or a big of an impact on the game as I think they will be in the future. So I'm really looking for artifacts to use specifically in raids. And I thought this was going to be one of them, but it doesn't look like it. Uh, but Noble Oath here... Health, uh, wow, just up by 50%. That seems insane. That seems really, really insane. That's a lot. That is a lot. My kicker ad is going to have a good old time with that. And most importantly, oh god, base speed adjustments. Oh god. <laughs> most importantly, Alexis Basket. So before, 40% chance to gain increased attack and crit chance. And after 40% chance to grant increased attack greater and critical hit 
for the start of turn. Oh no. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no, I don't like it. Oh no. So, when A. Vildred revives and gets his measly attack buff right now, wait, it, it is regular attack. It's not greater, right? I just know he gets an attack buff. Now it's a 40% chance he gets a greater and then you just lose. There's nothing you can do. Oh no, that sucks. I am not happy about Alexa's basket, uh, but I'm laughing right now because so many people probably got rid of theirs after I told them not to. Um, this is a this is a huge change to it. I really like this now. This is actually going to be useful for some people. Uh, so you could build people with like 60% crit rate or something like that um, and just have this going. And a lot of times you're not going to crit, but when you do crit, oh my god. I like this. I like this. Okay, that's interesting. That's an interesting one. We're going to have to see how that plays out. But I, it basically puts Vildred to like a 40% chance to kill you when he revives now. And I don't like that, you know? Like, I don't like dying very much. So that's unfortunate. Araminta, please give me a base speed boost. Why is she not in the list? Why is she not there? Oh my god. Moonlight Heroes. Oh, there's still more. Okay. So Tenebria going up to 110. Jeez. Basar up to 108. That's still not enough as a stripper, but I do like it. Ludwig to 112. Lulu Ka buff, of course, now that I don't have her. Uh, Mercedes Zerato, Champion Zerato. Uh, mages need a huge base stat increase, by the way. Um, one of the biggest problems trying to use any mage right now is if they are not meant to go first, they just almost can't be used because um, they're so, so, so low on base stats. Uh, so this will help a lot, but honestly, they need like an HP boost or something too. Hey, Taku's probably jumping up and down right now. I think that's your name, right? I never know how to pronounce your name with all those here. So this is this is obviously a really good change. I'm pretty sure they selected every mage except for my um, Araminta. Obviously not, but I'm I'm pretty excited for this. Uh, okay, this is this is the sketchy part that I'm worried about. Okay, let's see what happens. So as mentioned, we will once again give you details. There have been no change. Oh, no changes. No changes at all since last time. Um, so everything here is the same as before. It is just regular increased attack. Okay, so Arbiter Vildred is literally going to do more damage than before 40% of the time. Um, Jeez. Jeez. Okay, so I am, I'm shocked. That's a huge update balance adjustment thing, and I'm really happy with, like, 95% of it. Like, they definitely hit the nail here. I'm really, really, really excited for this. This is really great, and um, really good job right now for their team. Really happy. Everything is really clear. They highlighted what's changed. As I say that, they literally didn't highlight anything on this page, but they did on the last page. Um, really happy and a lot of these changes are great like I really like the speed change but like I said I prefer uh, like a tankiness change for a lot of my heroes but I'm happy for this and this is definitely going to help people out um, none of these super stand out as um, making them like a game breaking change compared to before because like it doesn't really make them fast enough like Basar is obviously going to be way better uh, 5 speed higher as a stripper but it's not really going to do much um yeah so holy anyways i'm confused i'm excited and i'm all of the above so let me know in the comments below what you're most excited for uh, me personally i'm going to be using my um araminta as a budget ml araminta for a bit uh, i'm also going to build her really really fast and bruisery uh, with as much attack as possible, I think, and as much speed, HP, defense as possible. Um, and I'm just going to try to hit people with her. And I'm really excited for that. So uh, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. As always, hit the bell notification. And I will talk to you all later. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody.